Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here on this week's uh, halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Thanks for joining in. It's uh, Monday here, September 12th, and um, markets are in rally mode uh, big time. So just looking at kind of the headlines, what's going on, there's really um, not much in the way of specific headlines. I mean, there's a lot of anticipation. Uh, CPI is tomorrow, and that's going to be something that's going to be highly uh, scrutinized and certainly um, talked about. Um, if not all day today, uh, maybe all day tomorrow, maybe for the rest of the week. I don't know. So, you know, we could see um, some opportunity. It could be potentially a lower CPI. We could see inflation. We, we've seen inflation in our everyday lives come down a little bit or as gasoline prices. Um, but you're also seeing housing come in a little bit. You're seeing mortgage applications dive, uh, rates going higher. That's sort of a consequence of um, slowing the economy but also fighting inflation. And so this is, you know, one step forward, two steps back kind of a thing. And, and I think the markets have kind of gotten into a um, sort of a narrative of, uh, you know, good news or better news um, and, and other news that's maybe less worse. And so, you know, with that, I think we're, today we're going to be looking at just some, just some typical things. We look at just the overall uh, market perspective, um, year to date performances of these um, S&P sectors. And um, I'm going to look at a screen that um, has identified what we call uh, sort of oversold uh, setups um, in a specific, uh, so on a specific chart. And we have something called a checklist screen. Um, this is on our full system here on Chicken Analytics, but you can utilize some of the things I'll share today um, and, and, you know, on the ACP platform as well. And so I'll go over the setups. Um, it looks very industry specific. I don't, I think you'll be, um, uh, probably not surprised, but, uh, interesting, uh, interested to say the least, because I think what you're going to see is a specific industry at play. And I think you know which one it is. Um, but stay tuned and we'll take a look at those and go over them and look at the power gauge and how they're setting up. And just, uh, you know, we'll start off with a market overview and then we'll dive into the charts. So let's see what we see. All right. Uh, so we're just going to start off with just some notes real quick. And obviously, this is uh, an interesting day here. We've got markets up across the board. And things are you know, being played out. At, you know, Obviously, things got oversold. And we're going to look at some names that got oversold anyway. So it's kind of in line with what the market's seeing as well. Um, you know, but look, we're, you know, we're, we're just seeing investors go through some really deep thought about what's happening here in the markets. And, um, you know, when you've got that kind of um, setup, you know, it's, it's not an easy tape. So it is a tough tape. There's a lot of factors at play. Uh, the key is kind of narrow it down uh, to the risk that you're willing to take, right. Based on um, your ability to take risk and your willingness, right. I mean, that's kind of the, the definition of risk in general. And, um, you know, over the next several weeks, even months, even days, really, um, things are going to be volatile. And just, that's just the, kind of the way it is. They're going to be volatile on the upside and on the downside. Um, all we can do is assess the situation and kind of see what's happening there. So, you know, uh, if you're short term, be flexible, uh, be able to make changes. Don't kind of lock yourself in. Um, if you're unsure, sit out. Uh, you don't need to trade. And if you, if you are going to do it, just use smaller amounts. I mean, this is not... Um, something that you have to do um, and don't, don't risk FOMO and all of that mental anguish and spend all that mental energy on things. Just, just kind of take it one step at a time and, and see where it's, where it's heading you. We just can't ever take risks that you can't justify. I mean, that's really kind of the, um, the way of the world, right? In, in our world anyway. And I think that's important because you have to kind of realize that, um, you know, tomorrow's CPI is one report and you're not going to base all of your recommendations for yourself, I should say, you know, all of your trade ideas that you're finding just off of one report. I hope not. And is it going to maybe give us a future read? I think so. I think it's going to be more of a pivot point. In other words, we had the high print in a uh, CPI um, when that report came out in July. And obviously now we're going to be looking at August CPI report because it's September. So it's a month behind. And we're going to see where that takes us. Um, you know, I think that that could be the barometer. Now, if we don't see much of a pullback, uh, maybe we go to 8.2%. I'm not exactly sure if we're going to see uh, much lower, 
But again, depending upon how it's calculated, some people are even estimating we might see something that starts with a seven. Either way, I think that's going to be the pivot point. So we had the high set up and now we've seen a pullback and that'll give us a spread between the two numbers. And obviously that's going to be kind of scrutinized going forward, not only by us, but certainly by the Fed. And let's not forget that, you know, we've got the Fed uh, balance sheet that's running off uh, as well. Um, so there's the calendar real quick. If you want to pause the video, just kind of take a look. But, um, you know, the CPI is out tomorrow morning uh, at 830. So that's really the most important one. Thursday is always packed uh, full of uh, full of things. This week's no different. Uh, got a, a bunch of extra things in there. But you got your initial jobless claims and continuous claims as usual. But Friday, I think housing starts um, will be, be interesting as well. So that's something to take note of. There's your, just your sector overview. You can take a snapshot of that as well. Just kind of look at, you know, there's the S&P up here in the upper left-hand corner and all of the other sectors kind of go below this. And you can see where we've seen a bounce on, on almost every sector. Um, and that's just in the market in general, right? I mean, overall, you're seeing the rising tide lift all boats and here's all your boats uh, and they're moving higher. So that's kind of an interesting setup. August 22nd, there was a daily pattern. We hit that 4,300 rolled over. The 29th showed a significant pullback. And here we are uh, as of this morning when I took this uh, snapshot, right back to that 4,100-ish area, right? We're between that 4,100 um, to 4,120, 4,130, as high as 4,150. And I think, you know, you're going to give the market a little bit of slack either way above that or below it. Um, but that's really the interesting level that has been a, a telltale spot for this whole year. Next, we'll look at this uh, year-to-date sector performance. You can see there's your energy, obviously, being one of the biggest or the biggest, I should say, and followed by utilities, um, which is right behind it. So we're going to be taking a look at some charts today that are kind of in both of those sectors. There's the weekly uh, setup for the S&P, the bullish percent. I always look at that buying power, and I've counted this on a weekly basis, don't forget, um, three rallies. I don't know if we're starting rally four here. It kind of, kind of feels that way, but I went back and look at the averages. The average rally has been about just over 13%. That's up after a few weeks in a row when I stopped calculating this. Um, that was sort of the middle of August. And, you know, let's see what this middle of September brings us, right? We've got, you know, options expiration coming up this week. And um, so that kind of puts a smack dab in the middle. And September not being the greatest month from a seasonality standpoint, but um, that's kind of where we are. And I think that you can see that the chart kind of depicts the fact that, um, you know, we've been looking at these rallies um, kind of happening week after week and um, starting to kind of get more significant. There's the FANG index. I like just pointing this out. Obviously, we know the FANG stocks. There's a bunch of other names in there too. There's about a, a 10 or 11 total names in this index. It's something to take a look at if you, if you want to look it up. Um, you can pull it up on... Uh, the ACP platform, you see the symbol there, dollar sign uh, NY FANG, and that's the New York FANG Plus, right? So it's not just our stocks, it's a few other names in there as well. There's your pre-pandemic high, uh, still in a downtrend. You can see rates uh, as they moved higher, really from the beginning of this year, that's when you saw the index break down and move lower. There's no secret there. Um, they don't like higher rates, these stocks. So uh, we know that and something to be you know, to take it uh, into consideration. And lastly is sentiment. Let's look at this. This is unbelievable. This is one of the lowest, uh, it's among the 30 lowest bullish sentiment readings in this survey's 35 year history. That's pretty amazing. Uh, the bullish was, uh, percent was only about uh, 18 versus 53. And there are your averages historically. So this is well underneath, uh, better than 50% lower than it typically is on a historical average basis anyway. And you can see it's just steadily been in decline since uh, that rally uh, ended, right? And so you, know, you see where it says the 817 was the highest level. Here we are on 9.7 last week, which is 18%. And if I go back to this rally page real quick, that's when this ended, right? That's when the rally ended. So that's kind of where we are. So let's dive into the charts and take a look and see what's happening there. All right, folks, I'm just going to show you something that's uh, a little behind the scenes here on uh, Chicken Analytics. And what we have is we have a little bit of a checklist here. And we try to identify names that are both strong and at uh, the timing level, obviously more uh, appropriate for that particular level, right? So we're trying to find names that are also showing very bullish, obviously, uh, have strong relative strength, have strong industry strength, but are oversold 
Um, long-term trend is strong and obviously money flow is still persistent. And so a name like, you know, Brookfield infrastructure, a multi-utility name, a $19 billion market cap, $13 billion of revenue, PE is a little high, but um, considering what they do and what the, what the, the industry they're in, it's, it's been really in an interesting setup here really since uh, the end of June, really bottoming with the market here and pulling higher. This pullback and move higher is absolutely an interesting setup. So I like to look at that. BP is another one up here on the list, another very bullish name. Great uh, metrics here from the power gauge standpoint. Same setup here, not as strong, but um, similar pattern, a very similar pattern. And But this is a massive company that pays a decent yield in the energy business. Uh, we know that for sure. They've had some um, interesting times over the years and um, no, no different now. So here's a name that's kind of off um, out of the energy, energy index, but more of in the uh, healthcare, which could be considered obviously defensive. And so we know that those defensives have done, have done well this year um, based on just market sentiment, risk off sentiment. But here's a name that had incredible relative strength starting at the very beginning of the year, definitely broke down. Uh, in that middle of the May, and I'm sorry, middle of June, started the breakdown in May and bottomed in June and has really turned the corner. So look at the name here up almost 50% just in, it's just in a few months, but really strong setup, I, 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 pretty, pretty amazing levels here. So that's, I thought that was interesting. And then you've got all the names here. If you can see the list, obviously on the screen, you're seeing oil and gas, you're seeing uh, pipeline companies, uh, you're seeing small cap names in the oil and gas area, like I think this is Genie Ener Energy, um, really almost a micro cap under a billion dollars. Um, and then you've got LNG, which we know, which is um, Chenier, Industry, uh, Chenier Energy. And, you know, that's an interesting play just because of the LNG component of what they do. Obviously, we we are... Um, if not, this company is, if not the largest LNG producer, um, is really one of the reasons why we became such an excellent uh, provider of LNG around the world. So uh, it's re really a, a, a sort of a, a barometer of the market and one to watch. But if you look at how these, all of these have set up, um, most of, of the names here on that are basically revealing to us on our database that have a really strong checklist are in the energy complex, right? And we talk about this all the time uh, from a sector standpoint, but I'll show you what our sector review looks like. And we just rank this by rating. Our lowest rated sector right now are between real estate and uh, communications, but XLC being the worst. And the best one being energy utilities, industrial staples, healthcare, and discretionary has had an interesting run here, but it's really not in the top names. The top names are uh, energies, utilities, industrials, and I'd even throw staples in there because obviously it's been, you know, from a defensive standpoint, has been strong. So that's kind of what we're seeing here on our database right now. Okay, everybody, that's all we have for today. I appreciate you tuning in. And once again, thanks for uh, watching and, you know, please leave your feedback. Uh, we'd love a like here at the end of the video here on YouTube as well. But, uh, when you get a chance, uh, take a look and, uh, and give us some feedback. Really appreciate it. Thanks again. Again, I'm Pete Carmasino, uh, Chief Market Strategist here at Jake Analytics. Take care.